Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to look at a method by which we can easily create grids inside of Google Earth. Now, Google Earth does not natively possess a tool by which you can create grids. It does not have an offset tool. It does not have any snapping capabilities. So if you just try to eyeball a grid by using the path tool, is ultimately going to result in an inaccurate grid. But it does have image overlays, so we can use those to our advantage. We could create a grid in an external application like Photoshop or GIMP, and then import that grid as an overlay. And we can scale the grid to the spacing that we need, and then simply trace over it. Let's say that we have this site here, and we need to create a grid of ground control points that we can use for our mapping project. I'm going to head over to the image overlay button in the menu and I'm going to click on that and under browse I'm going to navigate to the folder that contains a bunch of grids that I have already prepared. These are going to be included with the project files under this video. Let's say that I open the checkered grid variant 3. I'm going to select that and click on open and this is going to import it in the viewport. I'm going to click OK for now just to import it there. What I want to do now is to scale the grid to the spacing that I want. Let's say that I want to have a spacing of 150 meters. I'm going to head over to the path tool and click on that. And I'm going to open the measurements tab. And under length, I'm going to switch this to meters. And now I'm going to make a path here just to measure 150 meters in one direction. And I'll press OK on that. Now I'm going to right click on the grid and go under its properties. And what I want to do is to scale it so that we have one of the sides of a square measure against the guideline that I created. So I'm going to hold the shift button on the keyboard and I'm going to then left click, hold and drag on one of the corners of our grid to scale it from the center. And this is why I started the path from the center of the grid so that I don't have to reposition the grid every time I scale it. So now I can just click OK on that and we can see now our grid is scaled more or less. So each one of these squares now should have sides of 150 meters. I can right click on the path now and delete it as we no longer need it. Now all we have to do is to trace the grid or we can also place points at every intersection if that is what we need for our project. I'm going to make points in this case, but first of all, I want to reposition the grid so that it, as much of it as possible is within the boundaries of this parcel. So I'm going to right click on it and go under properties, left click, hold and drag on the center and just reposition it. Can also rotate it if necessary. This is going to make it fit better. And now that I've positioned it more or less within the extent of the parser, I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to head over to the place mark tool and create a new place mark. I want to adjust the icon for it. So I'm going to click on the button to the far right of the name field. Now I want to import a custom icon. So I'm going to click on the add custom icon button in the bottom left corner. And I'm going to click on browse. I'm going to navigate to this folder that contains icons that I've prepared. These are also included under the project files of this video. I want to import the one with the crosshair. So I'm going to select it and click on open and I'll press OK on that. It's going to be imported under our list of default icons here. I just want to reduce the scale to one. So under scale, I'm just going to type one. Now I'm going to click OK on this and I want to give this a name. I'm just going to number them. So this will be number one. Then I'm going to press Control and C and then Control and V on my keyboard, having selected the place mark under the list of places just to make a copy of it. Then I'm going to go under the properties and call this place mark two. And then just continue this process until I have created a point at every intersection of the grid. And so here we have our grid of points. 
I can now turn off the grid overlay. So we have just a point in the viewport. I'm going to right click under temporary places, go under add and create a new folder. I'm going to call this points and press OK on that. Then I'm going to select one of the points, either the first one or the last one, hold the shift button on the keyboard and then select the first point and I'm going to drag all of the points under the point folder so that I can conveniently save it out if I need to send it to someone. Now, if you need to export these points out as a KMZ, you can just right click on the folder in which the points are placed and then go under save place as, then navigate to the location on your hard drive where you want to save the file to, and you can save it out either as a KMZ or as a KML. In most cases, I would say when you're saving out vector files that you are intending to send out to someone, you should save them out as a KML simply because some applications may have trouble reading KMZ files when it comes to vectors. So in this case, I'm going to select KML file because we're trying to save out a vector file, meaning that we have points, lines or polygons. And in this case, we have points. So I'm going to save it out as a KML and I'm going to click on save. Now I can send out those points like this as a KML, but if those points are intended for surveying purposes, for example, you may want to send them out as a CSV file or a comma separated values file, as this is the standard for surveying equipment. They can also be saved out as a shape file, but you would have to bring them into QGIS, for example, and then save them out from there. And it is fairly simple. All you have to do really is to grab the KML file and then drag and drop it into the QGIS viewport. And we can see now the points will be imported. From here, we can simply go under the point layer, right click on it and go under export and save features as. We can choose the format that we want to export them out to. We have S3 shape file and we also have the CSV file format. I have covered how to export files from QGIS towards CSV file format and Esri shapefile. If you're interested, please make sure to check that session out under our main QGIS program. One thing I would say is that if you're intending to use these points for serving purposes and you want to export them out to a CSV file format, then it is a good idea to go under the attribute table of the points and make sure that you have columns called out for the latitude and longitude or the X and Y values of these points. As when you're importing the points from Google Earth to QGIS, those values are not going to be called out by themselves by default. So this is something that you have to do if you're exporting out to CSV. I have already covered how to call out such values for vector files inside of QGIS. So if you're interested, please make sure to check out those sessions under our main QGIS program. And with that said, thank you for watching. I hope the video was useful. See you in the next session.